Uh, my name is Andrew Sakowitz, and this is my Frank, uh, colleague, Frank Pizzi. Uh, we're behind this new product. Uh, we work for Esri Professional Services. Uh, I myself have been a uh, consultant for past more than 16 years. Uh, the first 10 really on the road. I travel to perhaps many of you. And um, you know, this product is really the result of our uh, collective uh, experience. Uh, so all these scripts, all the tips and tricks that we've learned uh, from traveling on site and from our own uh, in-house lab, uh, now uh, we input it into this new product. So we're very proud of that and very happy to see that there is a growing interest. And the motivation is growing. So. Of course, there are many excellent tools, and each of you probably have uh, their own monitoring tools. But oftentimes, they fall into these categories. They're focused on infrastructure. They're controlled by IT. They might not have uh, ArcGIS components. And it's our observation that because of these gaps, they're not very effective to troubleshoot advanced ArcGIS platform uh, problems. And you, the customer, need help. You need help with uh, reducing resolution time. I have no doubt that if you have time, you, will, you would solve all these problems. But I also know from my travels that most of you wear many hats. And you simply cannot allocate a couple of hours you know, working on a puzzle. Uh, so you need tools to reduce this time. In addition to this, performance is an ongoing topic. There's always appetite for improve the performance. Administration. With the growing complexity of ArcGIS platform, it takes more and more time for you to administer. So we want to reduce the uh, total cost of ownership. And the final bullet is to help with our users and satisfaction. Please don't try to analyze the, this diagram. Uh, but I do want to kind of make my point. This is not simple. This is not simple for Frank. This is not simple for me. It's complicated. So in addition to ArcGIS components, we are highlighted in, in white font. For example, a uh, web adapter, a portal, uh, ArcGIS server, a data store. You see in the yellow, there are many components that are outside of the ArcGIS platform. Certificates, load balancer, firewall, storage, they all are critical. If they're not working, the platform is not stable. How do we do this? Well, we do this by monitoring end to end. And you might ask yourself a question. How is it different from other tools and approaches? That's one of them. We really believe that the only way you and us can be effective if we monitor end-to-end -end solution. Not only as we platform, but also underlying infrastructure. How do we do this? Well, to make it effective, we focus on these three typical cases. Unstable infrastructure, uh, unstable infrastructure, overloaded system, and bottlenecks. I will be a little bit more on that. So you, um, it's very important to have a scalable and non-intrusive solution. What do I mean by not intrusive? We do not want to put agents on your production system that will compete with the resources or even compete with your license. So keep in mind that some, uh, if not many, monitoring tools, that's how they, they operate. They require agent on each machine. It's a very elegant way to collect all the information because you're bypassing all the security. But the, the downside of that is that something needs to be deployed on each machine, needs to be managed, and, and you know, it definitely will compete for the resources. How do we know that ArcGIS monitor is not intrusive and scalable? Because we also use it to support our internal program called uh, Esri Managed Cloud Services where we host your solutions in the cloud that we manage. So we, we, uh, we use ArcGIS Monitor as well. In other words, we drink you know, the champagne that we produce. Uh, I'm sure there are many others saying. OK. So what is ArcGIS Monitor? First, it provides actionable information for health. That's the first thing. 
It's not the only thing. You might think you, you, you might assume that uh, uptime and health is primary uh, focus of of ArcGIS Monitor. Uh, it definitely is important for managers. You, you need to understand the alerts, critical and warning, all these differences. And it will be more of that. So we'll be coming back to these topics. Right now is just a quick overview. Uh, but even if your system is healthy, you still want to have the information of what's being used, what services are being popular, where users are coming from, uh, what is the user load. And you, we will we'll use these uh, topics, load, 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 which will be in transactions per second, more of this uh, later. And finally is the SLA. So this is very important, for example, for us in managed services when we host solution, because we have a contract with you that we deliver uptime three nines or four nines. And how do we measure? How do we prove that we're, we're meeting these SLAs? So um, we have a solution for that. It's very uh, useful for managers because they can compare the health of the system uh, between days or months or weeks or a different solution. So this is the primary three um, focus area. OK, so I mentioned the overloaded uh, solution. Too many users, too many services. Well, let me just ask you. How many of you have more than 100 services? OK. How many of you have more than 200 services? So for those of you who raised your hand, more than 200 services, if you try to deploy them on one machine, all of them, you will be here, yes? You will run out of memory, correct? And I bet that many of you learned the hard way that you deployed and you realized that, wow, we run out of memory. The irony of this, your server probably could crash before first user log into the system. So we really need to tools to quickly understand the overloaded. Now, it's always a question, I know that it's overloaded, but why is it overloaded? And then how can I optimize this? So more on that, including uh, ArcSoc Optimizer for those of you who are managing high number of services. How about unstable infrastructure? For example, VMware. Uh, that's a typical opportunity for uh, IT if IT is not familiar with the application usage. Let's say, what, what do I mean by application usage? How about application that tracks hurricanes in the US? What is the US season for hurricanes? Uh, now it's kind of crazy, but let's assume from July to September, yes? What is your application utilization in April? Zero. In May, IT will allocate CPU and memory for your application, which probably will be a fraction of the CPU. And then the hurricanes come, and users will hit your system, and it will be too late. And you will experience a hit. You will be overloaded. There will be performance degradation, maybe even instability. Then if it's part of the VMware cluster, the vMotion will kick you off to a new host, which is also pulling the rock from underneath the ArcGIS server. And half an hour later, or maybe an hour later, the system will recover. And then you're wondering, it's like, what just happened? This is the worst thing that can happen. You know, now when we need this application, it was just unstable for almost an hour. And I see this over and over and over. So you need tools like ArcGIS Monitor to arm yourself with the information and take it to your stakeholders, IT or others, and say, listen, this is how uh, it's usage. So when it comes in, here's the target CPU utilization and memory, and please make sure that you reserve that. The second thing is, uh, ArcGIS Server's cluster. So when we move ArcGIS server from one uh, VM host to another, that's not healthy. Most ITs are not doing this for SQL Server on Oracle because they say, well, it's a, it, it's a database cluster. ArcGIS server is the same cluster. So you need to make sure that it's being excluded, that it's not being moved. Uh, does it make sense? You guys know what I'm talking about? So with the VM, uh, there, is a, there is a physical machine. There are many physical machines. And your VM is just being moved from one physical host. And it become, if this host is busy, to a different one. 
it's a long, long, long way of saying that you can experience this, and ArcGIS Server actually is a victim of that. But you need tools to kind of quantify and, uh, and communicate to your stakeholders. Bottlenecks, that, 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 that could be a difficult one because uh, I, I use the, uh, the typical example of uh, um, ArcGIS server services uh, min and max instances. So what are the min and max instances for, for uh, ArcGIS server services? One and two, yes. So you bought yourself 48 core machine, you know, 48 lanes, and you're like, I can process a lot of things. And then you just open one toll boot. And, you, and then you go to the IT and say, uh, well, we have a problem. And the IT says, we don't have a problem. I mean, there's absolutely no load on our system. And I mean, the load is on this side because everything is being queued up. So it's a classic example of, of, of a bottleneck. And as I mentioned, the challenge of diagnosing this because the utilization is very low, the only key uh, and clue that you have is it's terrible performance because everything is queued up in front of it. So you need to have tools to understand that you have this bottleneck. Uh, the same with uh, version geodatabase. If you don't reconcile and post and compress, you will run into these type of issues. So you see it's getting more and more complicated uh, and you need, you need help. We need help. Um, so what are the typical challenges? And again, I, this is my, my uh, typical engagement. When I'm being parachuted on site, I land and we're meeting in, in, in the big room. Let's imagine that it's a big round table. And to my left, there's a project manager, then is a GIS administrator, network administrator, storage administrator, database administration, DBA. And we just go through the round table of you know, what is the problem? And does anybody see anything in, this er in their area? Multiple administrators. And you probably know the end of the story, yes? Well, not me, not me. I don't see anything, not me, you know. And, but the problem is there. The problem is there. Uh, one of the reasons is that we're dealing with multiple tools, uh, different timestamps. Most monitoring tools will use UTC timestamp. So, you know, here in, in California, oh yeah, plus, plus eight, or depending on the daylight, plus night, and then it's just really hard. Uh, I remember uh, I, I went to a customer and they say, yeah, we have monitoring tools and I can, I can give you everything. And they gave me 10 gigs of, of spreadsheets. I, I couldn't even open most of them. Uh, so it was really not usable. This one, this one is, is important to, to, to a point, and I, and I know that's a main challenge to many of you. You are in charge of the entire solution. You're in charge of the, the entire cake, but you have access only to one layer. And it's hard to be effective. You need eyes on everything. Now, you don't need to be an admin, but you need to have understanding of the entire software stack so you can go to other stakeholders. So you can go to your DBA and say, listen, I am not DBA and I don't understand these logical IOs. But every time that I see high logical IOs, it corresponds to my performance degradation. So I don't know chicken and egg, I don't know who, what is the root cause, but clearly there is a correlation between database and my performance. I think your success will be much better if you go with this information. So, um, so I hope that I made my point. It's, it's a challenging for all of us. And here's the picture. Here's the picture of me. I have many pictures like this over 16 years. I bet that you have many pictures like that as well, yes? Because it's not even that we have a problem. We sometimes, we don't even know where to go, who to call. Should we call all these vendors? That's not practical either because every vendor, it's just engagement and uh, cost. So, we need tools. When it comes to uh, value, I already mentioned it's not just for the administrators, but also for manager. Reduce the administration cost. Help communication between GIS IT. I was talking about this a lot, and I think it's very important. And always, let's not forget why we're doing this. Uh, we're not doing this because it's a nice academic puzzle. We're doing this to help our users. 
Is it something that you can just order from Amazon and configure and self-diagnose yourself? To some extent, yes. Even novice user can install and configure and uh, be successful. But the primary audience is not a patient. It's more GIS admin doctors, yes? So you need to have a knowledge of administration, architecture, some maintenance to, in order to be effective. But I will have a use case showing you that anybody can use ArcGIS Monitor. Installation configuration. A couple of things. Uh, you know, we're using MongoDB. I mentioned this because uh, many of you need to whitelist that, so it's a free version you can uh, download to a community. There is no requirement for configuring. All you need to do is just download and we'll take care of the, uh, the rest. Other things, identify the solution, so you always need to uh, have a scope for your monitoring. You do not want to monitor your enterprise. You want to monitor your solution. Let's say that you are uh, an electrical utility company and you have gas and electric solutions. You want to split them. Otherwise, it will be hard for you to, to understand you know, uh, root cause. Uh, deployment centralized. Uh, uh, I will be more slides on this. Credentials. Of course we need admin credentials, so you need to prepare for that uh, before you install. Uh, finally, assign somebody responsible for ArcGIS Monitor. Why do I say it? Because initially we're all very excited and there's an enthusiasm and commitment to make it work. And we come on site and configure, we work with you, we teach you, we leave it running. And then sometimes a month later, you're not even aware of it, that it just stops working. So when we log in, you give us a report, and we say, ArcGIS Monitor actually was not collecting for the past two weeks. And you say, well, what just happened? And we say, well, uh, the, the collector password that, that we used is invalid, so it was just not collecting. But this is an example. It doesn't require a lot of babysitting, but it requires some eyes you know, to make it work. Okay, uh, if you download ArcGIS Monitor and install, it's just next, next, next. There's really no, nothing, uh, nothing interesting. I mentioned which you centralize or distribute it. So everything on one machine. What I'm showing here is the, this is the production system. Nothing is being installed on the production system. You allocate one machine. I notice only four CPUs, 16 gigs. So with this four CPU, 16 gigs, you can monitor a lot of things. And you know, we can, there are some factors, you know, uh, the intervals, if you choose to uh, monitor aggressively, like every minute, you might need more resources. But ArcGIS Monitor really does not require a lot of resources to, to monitor uh, your enterprise. So you allocate this one ma machine, and then notice that we have a monitoring service the credentials, security credentials are inherited from this, and that's how we connect to the Windows server. And then all others, for example, ArcGIS server, we store the credential of, 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 of site uh, in, in our uh, repository. Uh, for database, there is an ODBC. For Amazon, there are uh, secret keys and other things. But for now, I just would like you to see the concept. There is a one machine, and we monitor everything from that machine. If you have uh, a global uh, company and you need to monitor machines deployed on different continents, that's possible. Uh, we have actually deployed this at several customers. It's working very nice. However, some customers, some sites, might be uh, a low, um, high latency. So if this request coming back, uh, let's say that we, we, want, we want to monitor every minute and it's coming back within two minutes, that's not desirable, but it's not a showstopper. These points on the chart it will be kind of instead of one minute, two minutes. But if these, the, the network packets will be discarded to the point that these requests will stop coming, then you will see this not collected, not collected, data not collected, and eventually uh, we will uh, block it because it's just not working. So in that case, you might want to put something locally and there will be this distribution, uh, the architecture. So we have a server, and then you will put this small component. So there will be your local small agent that you can put uh, on remote sites, and that could look that way. 
I recommend that you always start with one machine centralized because you will have fewer machines to manage. Uh, it's just simpler administration. Do that only if you absolutely cannot succeed. Okay, uh, so I'll do a quick demo to show you what is the first thing you do after you install. So after you install, you will register collection, you will add monitoring service, and you will add the counters. Let's see how difficult it is. Okay, so when you open the administrator, uh, uh, you, you, you create a call, uh, connection and you click open. Okay, opens, sesame. So uh, there's nothing here, yes? So I mentioned the first we need to create, we need to create this uh, solution. So I will say, okay, register. And I say, uh, uh, UC solution uh, one. Uh, that's optional, but I'll be. So what we did, we created placeholder, really just placeholder. The next thing that we need to do is we need to add this monitoring service. So uh, we are right here. We need to add that monitoring service. So we right click and we add monitoring service. So while it's working, notice that the, 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 the monitoring service will be like Windows services. By the way, I have this uh, helpful thing. I hope it's helpful. Uh, might be more annoying than helpful, but let's see. Uh, so. So this magnifying, you see, when you install, the server will be installed and the service will be running. But now we're installing monitoring service, so I start it. Um, and let's see, you see uh, 2018. Uh, notice the port, we, we found available port. If you, if you have a locked environment, you use our help, we list all the port, port ranges that are required. So of course you need to open them. Uh, but the good news is that that means that we found this open port. So if we found it, that, uh, that it's available. Okay, so we, okay. So now we're creating a, a Windows service and it will kind of annoy us with many uh, info that we will create a service. Yes, uh, it's okay because that's what I want. Um, and, and voila, so we have the service, yes? So we created service, and let me take you back to our slides. We, we created this service, but now we need to connect to this machine. We need to create the first counter. So how do we do this? So I go to system, and I right click, and I add, and I will type, uh, localhost. So that's my first counter and I click test. Uh, there's a lot of checking so it will, uh, it, it will grind for a little while. Uh, it should come back with a valid test. But we can go back to uh, our report server. So that's what I have. You log into this uh, site uh, default password if you don't change is ArcGIS Monitor, but of course you have option of uh, changing this. And uh, let's see, let's see if we uh, if we have it. Um, it's not there yet. Okay, okay. So so this came. I need to save. And notice that uh, we monitor every one minute, so we need to wait one minute before this shows up in our report server. 
So you see, it's not very difficult. Of course, you need to spend more time configuring everything, but the mechanics are straightforward. And let's just see if, uh, if it came back. Okay, so we have, we have our first system. I can go to my categories, infrastructure, and let's see what is my uh, CPU utilization. Oh, it's 25%. Okay, it's not bad. Uh, how about memory? And okay, so you, you have a sense. We have a point. In one minute, there will be another point that, which will uh, create a line. Baby steps. Uh, we'll come back to more demos. Oh, I need to get rid of it. Okay. So if, if this is not uh, clear and you need more help, uh, we are at our uh, ArcGIS Monitor uh, um, product island, so feel free to stop by. Uh, we'll be there and our colleagues are already there and we can walk you through uh, in more detail step by step. Um, as the session says, that's the introduction, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, resources. What resources we have available? Online help. It's, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, uh, in addition to this, we have tutorials. So if you're not a person who likes to read documentation, I don't know many who like to do that, uh, we also have videos. And there are many short videos, really focused videos. So uh, I hope that uh, you can find one or another uh, to, uh, way to uh, to learn about that. Uh, so there are tutorials, videos, but also extensions. If you want to customize, write your own logic, that's also possible. And we have extensions that we publish, but also you can use them as a template. Uh, KB articles, if there are any troubles with particular version, then we post articles here. Okay, so I gave you like a really quick demo. I was clicking very quickly, but let's try to slow down and see what are the categories and what behind these categories and why we have these categories. So what we try to do is we try to group these categories according to the architecture and the web. Web simulates your solution. So when you're monitoring things, you always want to monitor your application and all the critical components underneath. So your web, your application would be, you know, indication, uh, you know, I call it, that will be a victim if ArcGIS server is not working, yes? So we always want to start with web. What, what are the critical things? When you monitor, you, as I mentioned, you always are interested in about performance, yes? What is performance? At the units of performance is seconds. So when you install ArcGIS monitor, you configure, and you're not clear about what are these counters, and you open our glossary, and there is a list of, you know, hundreds of them, well, the fastest way is look at for units. So anything with seconds, for example, response time seconds, that's performance. Server time seconds, that's the performance of the server side. Uh, network time seconds, that's the performance of the network. So I, 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 I want you to see that there are shortcuts that we can do. And the key ones is uh, response time HTTP code. Because what, what happens if you have, uh, let's say, three seconds response time and suddenly goes to uh, one second? Uh, you know, that, that's not a miracle. That most likely means that you didn't get a map. That's why that it came back so fast, yes? So we need to understand the content length of that. Uh, and oftentimes there might be a code 500. So there are additional checks. Now, if you want to be really fancy, you might actually look for particular strings. So if you or your request needs to return the JSON, and the JSON needs to contain, for example, a dealer ID, then you can say, you better have this dealer in the response, because if you don't have, uh, then it's, uh, that's not a valid request. And you also might say, find string not. 
If I ever find the word error in my responses, I will always say that it's an error. For those of you who are developers or familiar with HTTP codes, you do realize that our software sometimes returns 200, which for web developers means a valid request, but inside actually there's JSON saying error. You know, so you're like, okay, that, that's kind of, I, I see it as some of you, most of you know what, so believe me, we have added this just recently because we needed a way to, uh, to troubleshoot uh, these cases where uh, HTTP codes are really kind of lying to us, you know, sometimes. So don't rely on one thing. And this is a kind of paradigm, premise of everything. We always monitor a minimum two independent measurements of one component. Uh, ArcGIS, of course, uh, this, is, this is ArcGIS monitor. So there is a long list of uh, counters. Now, uh, each of them will always have a health check. So is it healthy? The challenge with the health is if ArcGIS server is down, it's not going to respond to us that I am down because it just, it, it's not responsive. So if it's up, it will say healthy, 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 or not healthy, but if it's completely down, there will be no response. So we need to interpret this no response as important feedback. And I mentioned we always have another independent checks of that. So with the combination of no response and another uh, check, we'll say ArcGIS server, for example, is down. I'm not going to go through all these uh, counters, but I want you to believe me that each of them will always have these two, performance and usage. Performance has units of seconds. So for example, busy time per transaction seconds. That's the performance of ArcGIS server. If you envision our, uh, architecture, you have a web adapter, a network, ArcGIS server, a portal. So this is just the, the part of the ArcGIS server, which is very helpful. And uh, so I hope you have a sense. How about geoanalytics? Uh, this is very complicated technology, so we are, we are adding more and more and more counters to help you with that. Database. How many of you are dealing with a version geodatabase? Okay. If I ask you today, how many records do you have in your delta tables? You probably wouldn't be able to quickly say it. But I see this as a vital indication of your performance. The higher the number, the slower it is. So it would be good to just have something handy that I don't need to log in to Oracle SQL Server and type select count from something, you know, every time. Just let's just have it. Oh. We can even be smarter than that. How about we set the threshold so we get the email or, or some sort of notification? So uh, here it is. Uh, if you're using a, a data store and you, have, you publish many services and you have many users, you might be interested in the connection because you might run out of connection. So these are just examples. This comes out of uh, our template, but you can build your own queries. Infrastructure, you know, this, every, every monitoring tool has it, CPU, memory, and we have it too. Not to compete with other tools, but we need the full picture. So we want to uh, have it included. You notice that we also have Amazon. So for Amazon, we have uh, application load balancers and uh, many additional things. So we really uh, parse every information that we have from uh, any type of uh, available resources to produce uh, end-to-end -end picture. Usage. I mentioned that even though the system is perfect, we still are interested to know uh, which services are being popular, what is the performance of that, and one of them is just like a map. So if you have a public application and these public IPs are coming, we can geocode them and display them on the map. On the other hand, if this is just internal application, all your IPs will be private and you will just get one point, so it's not as effective. Uh, but for public applications, it's very helpful. 
Okay, extensions. Extensions are available in the gallery and there are many, many of them. This is our way to upload the latest information. We're bound by release of our software. So we need to release at 10.6, 10.6.1. But if we have some new feature that we want to expose to you, we will put it as an extension. So extension is not part of the product, but you can consume it. Uh, and I mentioned uh, ArcSoc Optimizer. So, for those of you who have uh, more than 100 or maybe 200 services, most likely m uh, many of them are not being used. So you might say, okay, wouldn't it be nice to have some sort of a robot who will identify underutilized and reduce them to appropriate level and then find those they need increase and increase them every day and then hopefully with this efficiency overall memory and number of ArcSoc processes on the machine will be lower. So instead of having five machines, I will need only one machine? And the answer is yes. It's called ArcSoc Optimizer. So <laughs> thank you. Yes. So for those of you who are fighting with the memory, you know, and you're maybe just adding more and more servers, uh, check it out. Check it out. Uh, some customer have very impressive return on investment. You know, the, the reduction of the resources is uh, up to 80%. So just, just think about this. Um, okay. So that's how it will look. Um, I can have probably the full session just on the ArcSoc optimizer and the algorithms. But believe me, it's working. And then I have people in the audience that they've used this. So, uh, you don't need to take my word. Alerts. If you're an administrator, you want to know the alerts very quickly. It's a little bit intimidating and we're working on this. But if you can parse English words, you can be effective. What do I mean by English words? How about critical? Yes? Yeah, and there has some hyperlinks so you can click on this and you can navigate and it will say some, some things. So if you want to understand a little bit about the distribution, you can click here and it will take you this. And you might say, wow, this is really cool. And Frank and I will say, no, it's not cool. It's something that you don't need to look at it because it's right here. It's telling you how many hours and how many counts and how many groups. One of the challenges with monitoring tools, you can get lost. There's so many things to click, you'll be clicking all day long and you will forget about the objective. You need to fix the problem. So that's why we're, we don't really encourage you to just to be too curious about. I know that at the beginning you will do this, but after a while, practice your efficiency. Understand these shortcuts, because otherwise it will, be, it will be time consuming. So. So you are satisfied, you made your point like, yeah, okay, I believe, all these red, we have a problem. We had a little break, but that doesn't mean anything. We have a problem, Houston. So then we click on details and it tells us something about something is not found. Okay, so that means that the, the somebody's hitting the service that it's not existent. All right, that's, that's good to know, yes? Maybe uh, there, there are two solutions. One. Maybe the service disappeared and we really need it too. Maybe developer is hitting, made, made a typo. So instead of simple word city, there's simple word. Anyway, you see, you, you, can, you can work it out. If you have that, I'm sure that you will find a solution to that. Uh, I mentioned availability. So uh, we, we all talk about availability and uptime, yes? And it's measured using this formula. We're not going to try to dissect the formula. I just want you to focus on one thing. It's, it's really about the time, downtime. Regardless how you slice this definition, it's about downtime. So how many minutes per month the system was not available? But the definition of not available, it's not as simple as you might think. If you're a sysadmin and you're responsible for 10 servers, your availability is based on my servers were running for one month, yes? That's simple. But if you are a GIS administration responsible for application with 10 critical features, oh, that now it gets a little bit complicated, yes? And then, you know, how about non-critical? So 
our approach to that is we define the critical alerts. And we really need to sit down and talk to you like what's critical. You might say, I have this request URL and if this URL doesn't work, that's critical because this URL will go through the entire software stack. That would be one example. Most likely you will, you will have many of them. In addition to this, we automatically assume if portal is not available, our ArcGIS server not available, everything above is not available, so it's also critical. And that's how we build these critical alerts and then we sum up all the information and we produce this single number. Of course, we, we had to, you know, be smart about this and not to uh, double penalize, yes? So if we have two alerts overlapping, we shouldn't penalize twice. It's just one alert. It's very helpful. Uh, so, but the challenge is really definition. You know, I, might, I, I sound like everything is simple, but to be honest with you, at the beginning, it takes a little bit configuration and thinking to, to make it right. And there will be more slides on that shortly. So use case. I did say that anybody can install ArcGIS Monitor and use effectively to some extent. So let's see, you're a novice user and you're a golfer like me and your points disappeared and you can't find your golf course. Uh, that's a serious thing, yes? <laughs> so, okay, where to go? Uh, you can open your Visio diagram and you can just start analyzing you know, all the components. Remember, you're a novice user. So the moment, first of all, you probably don't have Visio diagram, yes? Uh, <laughs> second, you, I will call tech support. Well, you know, uh, that will take time, yes? Uh, you need to be, um, okay, yes. I, I really meant to say you know, something more direct than that, but you, 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 you beat me to this, yeah. You know, you don't want to be on the call, you know, while, you know, tea time is about to pass. So you do, what, what, what can you do with ArcGIS Monitor? So with ArcGIS Monitor, you click on that, and again, I'm asking you to use English skills to parse words. Critical, that looks like a good candidate. Then it says something here, ArcGIS Data Store, ArcGIS Data Store, Hosting server. Okay, it will require some skill. I mean, you need to understand what the ArcGIS data store is. Like, you, you probably, have, you, you installed that, so that, that's the minimum. I'm assuming that, that the, you, you have some basic knowledge. But then you have this hyperlink, uh, you know, maybe you click on this because most likely you will even know where, where to go with this. So you click on this hyperlink and it's giving you the machine IP of like, ooh, Oh, okay, so I don't have to go and check every host. So I have this IP and it says I cannot connect. All right, so that's good. You're like, I'm going to remote desktop to this machine. I'm a new user, but I am determined to see if I can be successful. So you know that when you installed, you know, there were services running and the service is not running. It's like, okay, I found this. Yeah, I found this and you try to restart, but you get the logging error. It's like, okay, logging error. Well, a password expired. Don't you, don't you have it like every month? I have this every month. You know, I always have this. You know, I, I install ArcGIS server using my, my password, and you know, every month it goes down because I forget to restart. The same you have. Uh, you probably are forced to rotate your passwords and IT will change the password and if you don't update this, that will happen exactly what happened here. So you fix the password and you have your golf course and you can go and, and relax. Um, so don't you think that even a novice user can, can benefit from this? But it gets complicated. In many cases, are not as simple as this one. So let's see what are the best practices. Okay, our demo site that I am about to uh, show you has uh, web adapter, portal, ArcGIS server, hosting server, G event, ArcGIS data store. And notice that you know if if things are working, they don't just stop working. Always, it's related. There is a configuration change or updates or something to the infrastructure. So believe me that there has to be a change if something is not working. This is a very important slide. 
remember, you will have many victims and one or maybe a, a couple of culprits, but if culprit is the most downstream street, uh, component that it's failing. So if this ArcGIS data store is not working, all of these are impacted by that. ArcGIS Monitor will show all of you, so it makes it a little bit challenging because you need to use your knowledge to identify culprits from victims. We're working on this so it will be automated, but in the meantime, that's the challenge. The next thing is when you configure uh, 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 counts, uh, counters, there's a temptation to install ArcGIS Monitor and just start adding counters. No, use your architecture and just pick, for example, ArcGIS server and ask yourself a question. Do I have counters here configured to monitor this? So for example, for the web, we have, uh, I have sample word city hosted. So that hits this hosting server. Uh, sample word cities hits that one. So you see, you always need to create your own uh, uh, heartbeat for each of these components. And there is more and more. So for ArcGIS, ArcGIS, you see we have uh, Windows services, ArcGIS, Data Store, we have Portal, uh, ArcSoc Optimizer, Portal Index, uh, here's ArcGIS server. So I can create all these lines and I can map them to make sure that we didn't leave any component. That's important. Uh, the same with infrastructure, all these systems, all these IPs are all these machines and we also monitor processes. Because typically it's machine, Windows service and a process. If you monitor three of them, you will not miss anything. Okay, so you have a problem, you come here, and just like us, where should we go next? Yes? It's just many rows. Uh, so the first thing, as I mentioned, you focus on critical alerts. Focus on critical, so you uncheck the warning and info. And then it kind of simplifies, and then you start parsing that. As I mentioned, Frank and I, you have our commitment. Soon we will have some user friendly uh, feedback for this. But in the meantime, you kind of need to understand this. You know, okay, portal, portal, then it has to be a portal, and group them so all these counters are related to portal outage and each uh, architecture component. How, how, do we, how, how did we do this? At 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, I have a PowerShell that does something to the system. So every day you will have these outages. So this is really complicated. Please do not use our demo site to, to uh, 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 assess the availability of our platform because uh, <laughs> definitely it's not. But you see, we identify the culprits and then, if you can go back and select the web, which are your heartbeats, and make sure that you can identify all the victims, that we didn't miss anything. And for example, I accounted everything except one right here, response time. I don't know what it is, so we need to investigate further. And if you're interested in the end of the story, come to our uh, sessions, I'll tell you. Uh, so you will hear the end of that story. Okay, so now it's really the demo and let's see how it looks. So uh, if you log into our demo, you will, fa you will have this screen. Notice that everything is pre-populated. Anybody who has a laptop can do this with me. It's uh, HTTPS ArcGIS Monitor .com. So you log in. Uh, I will turn my magnifier. 
So you can see. Okay, so when you log into your administrator, the home says, what is the current status? So you might say, I I'm just interested in what's happening now. And it says, attention, and there are some alerts. So that makes sense to click on the alerts. So let's click on the alerts. And you remember I said, how about if we start with critical? I'm going to uncheck all the warning, all the info. And in a way, uh, you, you see the same thing, yes? Very similar. You know, portal, uh, some Windows service, ArcGIS server, ArcGIS data store. And we can, uh, let's look at the, uh, for example, this group. So there, there are six counts, so I can click on this and preview. And indeed, there are, there are six of them. So you see, quickly you learn that you can trust our, uh, our summary. Then, if you want to look at the uh, victims, I mentioned you select the web. And these are my application. Of course, it's very simplistic, but I have two applications, uh, two requests, one going to ArcGIS server and another, no, another one going to um, a hosting server. Uh, let's, let's look at uh, other things. So, availability. This is really bad availability. And I need to congratulate myself for sabotaging the system very effectively, yes? I mean, this is a really good job, you know? It's, it's really hard to have such a lousy availability. Um, but I succeeded. What other categories we, we, we have here? So categories are, even if your system is working, you can click on, uh, on, on these categories and it will provide the summary so, for example, I want to see all the response time for uh, all these uh, requests, and something happened here, you know. So, if you are interested in particular one uh, counters, you can use catalog. Uh, this, is, this is just like our catalog, everything is listed. And when I mention that we are, pro we are not intrusive because we are processing one folder at a time, so we go gradually. Finally, you can use uh, reports. So this is a very convenient way to produce the report that summarizes. I, I, gener I will generate a report for uh, one, one day and uh, execute. And in a moment, uh, Excel report should uh, be generated. It's here. And let's see how it looks like. So it extracts all the information and summarizes. And it gives us this summary with a color indication uh, main categories are uh, uptime, performance, high utilization. So I can click on, on this response time, for example, and it will, will give us a lot of statistics and time breaks. Uh, so pretty much uh, that's what it is. Frank, did I miss anything? I... No, I think it looks good. I, I, I think the general workflow for most new users is going to be establish the, the collectors and then get familiar with alerts. Alerts is really what you're going to be watching. You'll be getting emails, of course. I don't, I'm not sure if we mentioned that for each, uh, not every single alert, but each time you at least get one or two for each one. So, so, uh, so I did the demo in configuring the counter. I, I only configure one, uh, one machine. But let's look how our demo looks like. You know, how much, how much configuration it's required. So this is our demo. And notice, uh, we have one Amazon, we have two ArcGIS server, we have six HTTP. Uh, so it's, it's just uh, a little bit work. Now, many of you ask, if I have an ArcGIS server site with 10 servers, do, how many times do I need to configure this? You need to configure this once. You just put this one URL with a token, and it will monitor even if you have 1,000 services. On the other hand, 
HTTP, uh, that's an uh, uh, individual URL. So you, you get this URL and you need to find this. And notice uh, that uh, we have a token. So you need to uh, uh, provide the token information. I mentioned also that it's looking for a string. So that assumes that it needs to be PNG. You know, uh, the same with portal. It's, it's just one URL that will monitor the entire portal. I hope you have a sense. So uh, I, I mentioned that if you're interested in a, in a related session, we have one for best practices for uh, tuning, testing, and monitoring. It will be a little bit advanced. It will be less about ArcGIS Monitor. Uh, so I hope that, uh, that I'll see you there. Uh, so we, we have some time, yes? I missed the part where you were logging into the demo site. Is, there, is that something that we're able to log into? Yes, anybody who logs in HTTPS, ArcGIS Monitor, that has you can log in. So with what account? Uh, it's already pre-configured. So all you need to, well, let me just, just demo this uh, one more time. Uh, uh, we, we still have a few minutes, so uh, um, please uh, use it for questions. Uh, and another thing is survey. Uh, if you find this session not helpful, make sure that you, you let us know. Of course, if it's good, then let us know as well. Uh, those of you who are leaving, thank you so much for uh, attending. I hope that was helpful. For those of you who are staying, please ask questions. Yes? Do you have any plans on getting integration with SCOM, uh, System Operations Manager? So the question was integration with uh, other monitoring tools like SCOM. Uh, we are building uh, API, and this API will be available, and you can consume that API. Okay. Uh, that will be our way of integrating. Uh, on the other hand, we are thinking about how to pull the information from SCOM into ArcGIS Monitor. We're very interested in this as well. So we, we will build extensions. Uh, if, you, if you find a way, then uh, I'll, be, I'll be interested to hear from you. Uh, very well. Good question. Any other questions? Yes. The question, do we have any plans for monitoring for security? Uh, this is not the area uh, that uh, we're focusing on, but as part of our managed services, we, we support the federal program. So we definitely are, uh, uh, have our hands into the security. Uh, I, I, I haven't thought about how to approach this. Um, my first reaction is that these are long-running scans. So ArcGIS Monitor has a kind of task framework. So if you can build something that will go and execute this, we can absolutely integrate. Um, but it's an interesting idea. Yeah, interesting idea. So Mark, if, let us know if you, if you, if you have the requirements. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be very interested to hear. Yes? I have a question about the uh, optimizer. OK. The question was ArcSoc Optimizer, what is the minimum number of instances? It can lower this to any number that you pre, uh, uh, define, of course, including zero. That's the, that's the recommended way, yes? If you have many services, they haven't been touched in one month, why to waste even one process of that? Set it to zero. So the definition of used or not used, it's also up to you. And we're using cumulative number of seconds in a given time. So if you say, go back one month and identify all the services that have not been used for longer than uh, 40 seconds, that will be definition of unused. And then you, you, you will set the threshold. And then you use the same thing for for used. So if, if, so we typically when you run ArcSoc Optimizer, you run for the last 30 days and you reduce all the instances unused and those that were used but didn't have enough and then you run another one 
for one day, and then you have a different criteria. So these are your hot services. So these thresholds will be very different. Come to our uh, showcase so we can dive into it because. Um, well, I mean, in a way, that's the machine learning. So, so we, 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 when you define this, and we'll go and execute all of it for you. So we'll reduce the instances and uh, and restart the services every night. Good to know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. The question is, is this product available as part of ELA or standalone product? It is a standalone product which will be available as part of the ELA, but remember that's a, that's a, that's a standalone product. So you need to talk to your account manager to understand how this product will appear in your ELA, but it, it is a product. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Question is, can I use ArcGIS Monitor even if I don't have uh, Esri software? Absolutely, yes. Uh, and it will be a great deal because uh, you can actually monitor unlimited number of servers because license is based only on ArcGIS server. So we have customers who are using ArcGIS Monitor for just monitoring not Esri components. Are you referring to managed services? Oh, oh, that's, so we use this for managed services. Yes. Yes, yes, yeah. We 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 start kind of uh, exploring that uh, because uh, our kind of thinking is customers who come to us to host the solutions. They want us to be responsible for this. But if you say. I really want to see my, you know, my dashboards. Then, sure, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? Okay. Yes. The question is, uh, can our ArcSoc optimizer handle new services? It, if you schedule this uh, every day, so it will always be delay, yes? ArcSoc optimizer is reactive. It analyzes statistics for the last day and will find your new service that it's so hot, it's so under configure, and you know, at 3 a.m. will pick it up and it will adjust and might not adjust to the proper level because let's say if you leave the max instances to two and you actually require 20, we only know that you, you've maxed out your instances. So we'll say two plus default increment is two. You can, you can modify this. So the next day you will have four. And then we'll learn why well, even four is not enough. And eventually we will find this to, uh, to 20. So that, that's how it is. That's right. Exactly. And it does automatically. And then, you know, we'll stabilize within a couple of days. But you, you, you control the increment. So you might say, instead of go incrementing by two, just increment by four or ten. You can do that. Yeah, in test, yes. Uh, and also, while we're doing this, we always monitor memory. So you set it. You say, no matter what you do, you cannot exceed 85% memory. Because, you know, you, it will do exactly what you say. It will increase by 10. Um, so, we, uh, so if we run out of memory, it will just stop honoring this algorithm. It's like, okay, I, I can't increase anymore. Sure. Licensing is based on an ArcGIS server. And it's an addition to the enterprise license? Yes, it's a, it's a separate product. Uh, but in the US, we have many, many discounts. So if you have an EAP, 
you have a free uh, ArcGIS monitor, up to 12 cores of ArcGIS server. If you, how many have used the uh, previous version, System Monitor 3? Okay, so those of you who use that, you get free license because you most likely, uh, you know, went through the engagement with professional services. So then you're only responsible, you, you're responsible for maintenance. And then uh, there was a question about ELA. Of course, that these are the discussion with your account manager. The bottom line is, you know, we want you to use this. We do not want to see one person who does not use ArcGIS Monitor because they're priced out. That would be really concern for us. So if you have that case, let me know and I will, I'm not controlling the license, I'm just a technical person, but I really want everybody to, to be using that. So feel free to, uh, to report this to me. Well, super. Great questions. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the conference.